Hey guys, Jacob here. In this video, I'm going to show you a puzzle that is going to blow your mind. Now, before I show it, I'm going to first tell you a brief history of the 7x7 cube. In 2008, the V-Cube 7 came out. This was the first ever mass-produced, fully functional 7x7. As you may notice, it is slightly rounded. The reason it was designed that way is so when you turn the top layer 45 degrees, the corner has a way to stay attached to the inside mechanism. The inventor of V-Cubes claimed that a 7x7 would be impossible to make otherwise. Now, another alternative to that is keeping it flat-sided but extending the outer layers. So that way, the corner still manages to stay attached. Now, a lot of people have thought throughout the years that a flat-sided 7x7 where the layers, the outer layer is not thicker than the inner layers is impossible. And however, that proved to be false because a guy in Taiwan by the name XB27, I don't know his actual name, created one. Uh, however, he kept the mechanism a secret because he was worried that people would rip him off. Um, I get where he's coming from, but at the same time, I feel like that's kind of selfish because that could have revolutionized big cube mechanisms and allowed for just a whole new set of properly proportioned cubes. But I don't have anything against him. That's up to him, and I respect his decision. However, a lot of people online were trying to figure out how he did it, myself included. And if you may remember, back in March, I made a prototype of a flat-sided proportional 7x7, but it had some major issues and it barely worked. After that, I kind of gave up on the, pro on the project until about a month ago, I came up with another idea that seemed way more promising. And a month later, fast forward to now, I finally did it. This right here is a real properly proportioned 7x7. As you can see, all the pieces are perfectly squared off. And I bet you're wondering uh, how it turns. Well, I'm going to show you. Third layer works just fine. Second layer works just fine. And now, what you've been waiting for, the outside layer works. Now, <sighs> um, I was a bit skeptical because uh, I wasn't sure how well it was going to work. And uh, the biggest problem with the last version was when you did a, a, a top layer turn, the corners would just fall down. But I came up with a solution that fixes that problem. And real quick, I'm going to put this cube in the checkerboard to show that it's fully functional. And I mentioned I made a prototype back in March that barely worked. This one is a significant improvement off of it. As you can see, the turning is much smoother, the puzzle is much more stable, and the corners actually stay in place. Now, despite being a significant improvement off of the last version, this prototype is far from perfect. 
The biggest problem is the corners are a bit loose and get caught very easily. As you can see right here, this one just got caught. And sometimes, sometimes that will happen. However, if you're careful, the corners will stay in place like they're supposed to. Now, I'm going to go ahead and actually reveal how it works. So, over to my computer. Uh, hang on. There we go, that's, that's better. So here is what the, um, the whole cube looks like in CAD. There's a top view. And then this is what it looks like with the top layer removed. Now, first, this may not look that different from a regular 7x7 mechanism, however, there is one modification that actually accommodates the corners. If you look closely, you'll see that this curve right here is not actually a circle. That shape is actually called a squircle. Um, a squircle is the halfway point between a square and a circle. So it's a smooth curve, but the radius gets larger as it gets closer to the corners. And what, and what this does is normally the corners are like this, but as it glides over these pieces, the stalk does that and then restores to its proper position. There it is, half assembled. This cube's mechanism was based off the Yushin Huanglong 7x7, and that is one of the reasons why it, it is so smooth. Another view from the top. And then this is the outer layer. Except for the corners, this is just a regular circular cut. And as you can see right here, this round part of the corner, the stalk, actually sticks out of the cone a little bit. Um, and when it glides over the um, middle part of the squircle, it actually gets pushed inwards a little bit so that this part is flush with the cone. And then the stalk is broken up into two segments. That way it bends. And the bend is positioned in a way where when it gets pushed in, the um, this thing right here is actually in line with the circle. And the way I solved the problem with the corners falling down is there is still an elastic string inside there, but there are these metal tubes around them to stabilize it. And as you can see, you can push a corner down still, but because of the way they're built, the corner actually pops back up. That is because the elastic string inside is under tension, so it automatically straightens itself out. And then there it is from the top. And then we got a group of centers. So that is uh, basically how, um, how I managed to make this work. Um, I wanted to make this video to show that I finally successfully made a proportional flat-sided 7x7, and I wanted to show how it works so other people can get inspired by this and maybe even make other puzzles based off of it. I have no intentions of monopolizing off of this, like X cube 7 seemed to, or XB27 seemed to have, um, but... I wanted to show it so people will no longer wonder 
how this is possible. So it is worth mentioning too that I also designed an 8x8 using that same concept. And uh, that's about it uh, for this video. Um, I've been trying to do this for a while and I finally made a prototype that works well. And uh, so I think that's going to be about it for this video. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.